Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk about my current progress in trying to make a point contact transistor. So there's the one I'm currently working on right now. It has a little slug of germanium from a germanium diode and then two phosphor, bron phosphor bronze uh, pins poking on the top of it with some screws to adjust to move them back and forth. And uh, I've been having a lot of trouble getting it working, actually. And uh, I got really excited because I finally got some oscillation out of it. But then uh, I was uh, I quickly realized it wasn't actually acting as a normal transistor. It's acting as sort of a, a negative re resistance type device. So there's still some work to be done to get to a work properly. But I thought since it was oscillating, I thought that could still be of interest to others that are trying to do this. So I have it hooked up in a phase shift oscillator, uh, this circuit right here, and I'm going to adjust that 50k potentiometer until it starts to oscillate. I also have it hooked up to a little amplifier so we can hear it. And the top trace is on the collector and the bottom trace is on the base. So as you see, it can oscillate, but in a phase shift oscillator, the output should be a sine wave, and that's definitely not a sine wave. It looks like a, a rounded off uh, ramp waveform, or sawtooth wave. So I think it's acting like basically once it reaches a threshold voltage on one of the capacitors, the transistor-like device suddenly discharges and then the capacitor charges back up again, so it's sort of like a spark gap or something like that. And uh, how I built it was, as I said, I cracked open a germanium diode, and there's a piece of n-type germanium in there. And I soldered these little terminal blocks onto a piece of copper-clad board just to give a, a platform. And uh, these have screw terminals, so you can easily replace stuff. And there's two screws on either side that you can use to gently move the needles back and forth. And that's all good, but the one thing I'm still confused about is the collector forming. If you just put two needles on the top, uh, I don't think it can work. Uh, you need to ha uh, form the collector and... Uh, what, what that is, is you pass a high current between the base and collector, and that high current causes very localized heating where the needle touches the germanium, and that moves some of the phosphorus from the needle into the germanium and does some weird semi semiconductor physics in there to make it work. I don't, I don't, I'm not quite 100% sure on the physics. I should rewatch Jerry Ellsworth's video, but I'm just trying to get it to work. So right now what I'm using for the forming is a 10 microfarad cap charged to 200 volts and discharged between the base and the collector uh, through a 1K resistor. And I'm doing that reverse biased right now. I've, I've seen conflicting notes on which way you should do it. I found an old paper from Bell Laboratories that said it should be done reverse biased. But if you watch Jerry Ellsworth's video, she does it forward bias, so I'm not quite sure who's right there. And uh, it seems to be working in a negative resi resistance mode, as I said. So just to give a comparison to what we're seeing, I have some very old transistors here. So 
So that right there is a Philco 2N240 germanium transistor from about 19, uh, I think 1959. And then this is a 2N569. I don't, I don't know what year this is from, but these are both PNP germanium transistors. And on the tester, I measured this one at about uh, HFE of 34, and this one's about 150. So let's put these in the circuit and see if it works as intended with uh, the proper sine wave that we would expect out of a phase shift oscillator. Okay, I have uh, this one in there first. Circa 1959. And let's see if I can get that to work. Man, this camera just doesn't focus anymore. Okay, so as you can see, that one seems to work just like as we would think. We get a very nice sine wave out of the collector. Okay, so now I'm going to put this one in there. Okay, so that one seems to work as well, but we don't get the quite the nice sine wave out that we did with this one, but it still resembles a sine wave much more than that one does. So one more time, I'm going to show this homemade one as a comparison. So something to notice here, these two transistors right here, they oscillate at a frequency relatively similar to each other, and that frequency shifts a relatively small amount when I adjust this potentiometer. With this one right here, the frequency is a lot higher and varies greatly with that potentiometer. So this really is not acting in the proper way. Okay, so I think that's it for now. I'm going to keep playing with this and see if I can get it to work better. It's just I, I kind of don't want to mess with it because it's a homemade semiconductor device that can oscillate, but I kind of want to get it to work similar to one of these where I get a, a sine wave out of it. Just thought I'd give an update on the Nixie clock. I'm a little cramped for space, so this is actually under my bed right now. And I just put everything on a piece of plywood and uh, rerouted all the wires and made it a lot neater. And uh, still has its teething issues. Every Every few days I need to adjust another one of the potentiometers, but... Hopefully after a while it sort of all settles in and will be reliable, but I, I personally don't think that's ever going to be, uh, ever going to happen, but no, it's fun and it's pretty to look at, and uh, when it's working it keeps remarkably good time because it's referenced off the 60 hertz. Okay, so that's really it for now.